for Group 17 from MMU to present their policy. Membina masih hadapan yang sempurna. Group 17, the floor is yours. A few weeks ago, I came across a beautiful article about five stateless children who had their lives changed forever by a friendly neighbor turned heroine. This women by the name of Auntie Sheila, made a very big impression on me when she said, and I quote, every child is like a flower. When irrigated with the heart, each flower will grow and become the most beautiful garden. And very much like Auntie Sheila, my group and I are extremely motivated by the Bajau children themselves, the Bajau Sea community. And so my recent visit to Superna brought me to tears. These Bajau children have been constantly discriminated, marginalized, and left out from the excess of education. Now, Mabena Masa Hadapan Yang Saburna is an education policy that is tied down in the strength of community and culture, where we are going to be subsequently refining their capability and understanding and potential to climate change through traditional ecological knowledge. And secondly, we will be identifying them as potential assets in comprehensive expansion of tourism and complying to their sentiments and solving one of the most critical issues of Saburna, poor waste management. Now, MH, MMHYS will be working on three pillars. Firstly, upskilling. Secondly, waste management education. And lastly, basic education. Now, for upskilling, what we're going to do is we're going to be upskilling the Bajau community and refining their existing skills such as lepa lepa weaving pattern, boat making, and other arts and craft activities. Now, we believe that if we are able to create a committee whereby they are upskilled, they will be involved in tourism and increase their livelihood. And by improving their livelihood, we believe that they will be incentivized to take care of the ocean. And because their livelihood depends on the ocean, we are essentially creating a win-win cycle here. Why? Because as we are taking care of the Bajau Sea community, we are also going to be able to take care of the ocean. And this cycle will then continue to repeat itself in the most sustainable manner. Secondly, waste management education. So how is this going to be done? Well, through composting where the Bajau community will be taught that organic waste can be divided into two categories. Waste that can be sold and waste that cannot be sold. Now, whole composting waste will be processed, sold and purchased by various stakeholders, such as the state government, where different types of compost are going to be in high demand. In this case, the stateless, the Bajau community, will be able to earn some sort of living from the compost that they have made in their own homes. Now, basic education. We will increase awareness of environmental related knowledge through traditional ecological knowledge, whereby through the art of storytelling, we hope to connect cultural belief that is reflective of climate literacy. The impact of this is that we are improving their communication skills with the tourists that visits the Bajau community. Now, to create this process of increasing the awareness in improving education, in this Bajau community, subsequently resulting in improved communication. Therefore, we will be able to make meaningful connections with the tourists and more tourists will come and visit them. Therefore, as a result, increasing tourism is a means of poverty elevation as it contributes to monetary gain of the community. So, Henry Ford once said, if everyone is moving forward together, then success can carry itself. So ladies and gentlemen, today we implore you so that you will be able to move forward together with us in order to help the Bajau Sea Nomad community so that we can all have this shared happiness and success with them. The community now is far from perfect, but join us in helping us make the community better, happier and 
support us. With that, I thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think what we'll do is open the floor to questions from the judges. Uh, any, uh, Mr. Koi? Thank, thank you for the presentation. Um, I would like to ask about getting the trust and the uh, collaboration with the community. How would this policy approach that? Because as you know, working with indigenous people, local communities, sometimes it's tough to get them to work together with government, maybe because it's a lack of trust and so on. So how would this policy address that issue going in? Thank you. Anybody else? Hi ladies, uh, my question is that, have you also done a bit of an uh, understanding or uh, uh, analysis around what are the existing policies that are in place and are they in, are they in conflict, are they in support and how are you going to address how you're going to address to either complement those or to eradicate some of the non-policies. Anyone else? So, one from me. Where do you see the challenges uh, in implementing this, particularly because of the possible statelessness uh, of these children um, and uh, discrimination? Uh, so how will you overcome that? Just the first question. Um, so we have currently listed out a few of our potential collaboration partners. So at the bottom right, right, okay, uh, we have Borneo Conrad. So Borneo Conrad is already currently uh, have an one alternative school in Kampung Bangal Bangal, Sempurna, but there's only one and uh, they're not getting really uh, any support from the locals uh, because they are currently having uh, five schooling days and it's affecting how uh, the living, how the Bajaos are uh, their lifestyle. So from our policy, we are only going to have two, uh, two days, we are going to operate for only two days, so the Bajaos won't debate, debate from their original lifestyle. Because one of the problems that they are not supporting Borneo Correct Alternative School is because um, they can't uh, adapt to the normal school life of normal children. Yeah. And so, um, okay. I think I will add on to what uh, this one just said. So in terms of how we are going to actually uh, eventually um, encourage the community to work with us, especially when you mentioned how the gov when working with government they might you know they might not be uh, very convinced to work with the government as a whole. Now we're looking at a particular area in Saborna Sabah which is the Kampung Bangau Bangau. Now this uh, committee in Kampung Bangau Bangau they've already have some sort of um, they've had some sort of sentiments and also uh, internal um, motivation to actually one to have some sort of uh, changes in their lives. And so this can actually be supported by our interview session with Dr. Ng. Uh, Dr. Ng is actually the author of Bajotopia, the tales of uh, Borneo of the Sea Nomads. And so uh, when we had the interview session with uh, Dr. Ng, he mentioned that how the Bajau Sea Nomad Committee, specifically in Kampung Banga Banga, already have some sort of um, desire to have their lives uh, change from what they were doing initially. And so um, because our policy is actually uh, what we are trying to aim for is start off, start it off as a, um, a, a what's the word, <laughs> sorry, 
as a pilot, pro uh, pilot project first. So we're starting in a small scale, you see. And so when we start in a small scale, we'll be able to eventually um, expand to other CNOMAC communities. But specifically now, we are focusing on the Kampung Banga Banga because they have that some sort of you know, motivation to change their lives. So that is why uh, we decided to go for this policy. Yeah. Uh, okay, to answer Trati Jamila's question uh, on the statelessness issue of the kids, because obviously they can't go to school because they're stateless. It's a red zone area because it's, la it's near Lahadatu, because of the war zone and stuff. But um, legal point of view that we came up uh, with a few of our defense that the zero reject policy as mentioned on our slide um, stating that the PH government came up with the zero reject policy on implementing it uh, for undocumented children as well as the uh, OKU children to go to school like normal but um, the visibility is not as visible as it is now but they didn't abolish the policy as well as they didn't they implemented it, but they didn't abol abolish it, so we actually can use the zero reject policy to allow the undocumented children to go to school. And to add on to what uh, Yoga just mentioned, um, yesterday we had the privilege of joining Amnesty BEC, and we joined a conference talk um, conducted by Draw Malaysia and also Amnesty uh, Front Family Frontiers. And so uh, during the session, they actually addressed the topic of statelessness. And so uh, during the session, we actually managed to ask them about our policy and how uh, we can actually, uh, is there a possibility for the Baja Sinomad Committee to actually get citizenship? And so uh, they mentioned to us, uh, Ms. Marina from uh, Drama Malaysia, she mentioned that there is a poss possibility for these Baja Sinomad Committees to get some sort of citizenship, uh, mainly because if you can see it from the slide here, our then Deputy uh, Prime Minister, uh, Tun Abdul Raza, actually re uh, mentioned how, um, you know, based on the uh, quotation here, obviously has an attachment to the country. Now, we are looking at the Bajau Si Nomad Committee living in Malaysia for centuries even. And so, we believe that there should be a time for them to eventually get some sort of citizenship because the Bajau Committee consider Malaysia as their only home. And so, um, it's, I think it's, it's a basic human right for them to be given uh, proper education, you know, proper access to healthcare, and essentially with the situation that they are living in, which is living on still waters, can you imagine the amount of impact that they will suffer from climate change? And so, we have to look into this. I think it's about time that we address this problem, we address this issue. And so, um, in, the, in terms of international law, um, Malaysia would actually be violating its obligations under, under Article 2, Section 1 of the CRC, where it's prohibiting discrimination of any, where prohibiting discrimination of any kind, including nationality and racial origin, against all children is something we don't want to reflect in our country, Malaysia. You know, we, we are a country that is very compassionate, very much in line with uh, advocating for human rights. And so I think uh, by solving this problem, we will be able to address some of the many issues uh, in Malaysia. So uh, my friends are talking about the legal part, so I'm going to talk about how we create the interest to help them to get the citizenships. As you can see, here is the basic mind map of our whole policy. So I just kind of touched on some point, which is the upskilling. How we create interest and value to them. First, upskillings. There is a language barrier there. So in our nearest plans, maybe in a few months when we are start implementing, we're going to involve the basic language, which is Malay, English and Mandarin, to help them to solve the language barrier thing. In our storytelling, we're going to involve their cultural background together with waste management, management to get their kids starting from planting a little seed to them to know what is the importance of waste management. And also, as we have interviewed uh, Dr. Ng Ken Kun, which is the author of the Bajatopia, there's a dark side of tourists there. People are throwing coins to the sea 
just to just because they are good at swimming. That's not the right way. So we are the, we are involving one of the workshops we are the going. There's three workshops, so I can touch on one first, which is Borak Borak. This is a sunscreen that made by the Bajau people that would not harm the sea pollution. So we are implementing, we are trying to collaborate, we would try to cooperate in our future plans together with the tourism company. Tourism company so that they the tourists can go for the workshop before they do stokeling or island hopping. Um, to answer one of the judges' questions just now on the existing effort on the policy that is already implemented there, this actually um, on our policy brief we have mentioned on the national tourism policy where it is stated that we are going to include uh, that the policy includes indigenous people in the tourism industry. So that's our entire policy's effort is about. Um, it's not as visible as it is on paper. So our policy effort aims to implement the national tourism policy more visibly by providing them with upskilling um, and waste management education. Thank you. Group 17 from MMU.